Matthew Brady was more than just a photographer of the famous during the mid-1800s. He was a pioneer who knew that photography was an art form that could be used to document important events in history, not just to make portraits of people. Brady risked his life and fortune to photograph the Civil War, going against what his family and friends warned him not to do. Although he wasn't the first photographer to come up with the idea of photographing a war, he created the most complete collection of photographs from a war of that time. His photographs showed the horrors and reality of the Civil War to the people back at home during this time, and provided a real picture of the Civil War to us today for historians. Unlike paintings and drawings of the war, which can be changed and interpreted however the artist and the viewer want. Brady first discovered the art of photography from Samuel Morse when he went to New York to find a cure for the eye inflammation that he suffered from. He studied daguerreotype photography from Francois Garand and discovered that he had a natural gift at photography. Brady went on to open a studio in New York City and then opened more studios where he and his assistants took portraits of people. Brady became very successful and well known. His love for his country and his dream of becoming a photographic historian caused him to photograph the famous figures of his time and he published a book of those photos. Once the Civil War broke out, soldiers began to come to Matthew Brady's studios to get pictures taken before they went to fight. He had been taking portraits in his studio for a long time and was starting to get bored. He began thinking about taking his camera to the battlefield in order to record history for his country. His friends and family discouraged him from going due to the danger of following a war and all of the money involved. However, he didn't care as much about personal fortune as he did being the photographic historian of the war. Brady decided to go anyway because, as he said, I felt I had to go. A spirit in my feet said, go, and I went. He assembled a team of photographers to help him and then received permission from the government to photograph the war. Brady took some of the pictures of the war, but due to his poor vision and the fact that he was almost killed at the Battle of Bull Run, he mainly stayed at his galleries and organized the pictures and his employees. In 1862, Brady created a gallery in New York City called the Dead of Antietam. It showed the aftermath of the Battle of Antietam, and everyone who witnessed these photographs was influenced greatly. The New York Times said on October 20, 1862, after witnessing these photos, that Mr. Brady has done something to bring us the terrible reality and earnestness of the war. If he has not brought bodies and laid them in our dooryards and along our streets, he has done something very like it. Once the war was over, people didn't want to have to think about it and how horrible it was. Brady had spent over $100,000 on the pictures, but went bankrupt when no one would buy them except for the government, who ended up paying $25,000 for the whole collection. Matthew Brady died sad, poor, and forgotten. However, now we know that Brady really did accomplish his goal of being the photographic historian of his time. If he had listened to the advice from his family and friends, people today would not have as great a knowledge of the war as we do. People living during this time period would have remained oblivious to the horrors that their friends and family off fighting in the war were living through. Brady was the first to show Americans past, present, and future the horrors of war. Before Brady decided to photograph the Civil War, the only way to document such an important period of time was by a picture or in writing. However, since so many people during this time were illiterate, the only way one could convey what was happening through the war was through a piece of art, such as a painting or a drawing. Even though these were good ways to portray what kind of events were happening, a painting of the war was nothing compared to a photograph. While paintings showed battles and individuals key to the war, they could very easily be biased toward whatever side the artist or potential viewer supported. For example, if the artist wanted the Confederate side to win the war, they might draw their pictures with the Confederates looking stronger, better, or more important than the Union, even if they weren't. There is a saying that the camera never lies, and I believe that Brady's photos are a great example of that, because it is incredibly difficult to show bias with the camera, because it is showing you the real picture, not just someone's interpretation of a scene. Today we learn in American history class all about the Civil War. We know all of the famous battles, individuals, and places. Matthew Brady's pictures teach us the things we can't learn from books or even paintings, like how sad this war was and the dramatic effect it had on everyone involved. Brady's pictures were also eye-opening to the people of his time, who might have remained at home while their families and friends were off fighting. They probably didn't know how violent and horrible this war was and the devastating effect that it had on their loved ones. The photos helped people realize that this war was not just fun and games, and historians can use these photos to learn about the war. Matthew Brady was not the first person with the idea to photograph a war, 
but he had the most complete collection of war photographs of his time and up to World War II. Because of him, photographing a war became less of a crazy idea, and it inspired others to do the same of events that might someday become influential to history. He has been called the father of photojournalism, and I believe that that is very true. If not for Matthew Brady, photojournalists such as Eddie Adams, Margaret Bourke White, Carol Guzzi, Stan Honda, Corky Lee, Lucianne Perkins, and Dith Pran might not have ever been able to take their camera and make a record of the events happening all around them. Because of Matthew Brady, we can now use photographs not only for a picture of a person or of an object, but as a way to be there during events such as 9-11, the Holocaust, or the Great Depression that influenced our world greatly as well as ourselves. Not only did he influence photography, but filmmaker Ken Burns also used Brady's pictures in his documentary, The Civil War, as did many other filmmakers to make visual scenes of the Civil War seem more realistic. Thanks to Brady's idea of taking a camera to war and his pioneering role in photojournalism, we know about the wars that our countries are taking part in, and we realize the horrors of war. Since we know how horrible this fighting is, people can develop opinions on whether this fighting going on is right and take action. If wars such as the Vietnam War were not photographed and no one knew the horrors that go on while our troops fight overseas, there would never have been any kinds of protests of war, like the ones that went on during the 1960s. Hopefully, photographs of war showing the terrible events that go on during these times can one day convince people to stop wasting money and innocent lives on wars and try to achieve peace. Matthew Brady helped change the art of photography and make it not only a way to preserve someone's face, but also an event. Thanks to Brady and his revolutionary idea, we have a greater understanding of the horrors of war. Americans should be forever grateful for Brady's idea for recording history that had such a great impact on our nation. Could